Hello friends, welcome again to another session on polynomials and uh, moving forward with our sessions, the series of sessions. Now we have reached at a point where we can discuss remainder theorem and factor theorem. So in the previous few sessions, you, you, you'd have seen our preparation to come to this level. And then now uh, in this particular session, we are going to understand this in detail. So if you have not uh, seen the previous videos, I would request you to go back and see the division method, the synthetic division method. And then the pre immediate previous video of, um, where we have explained the, the very basic uh, equation or relation where the dividend was equal to quotient times divisor plus the remainder, right? So we are going to use this particular relation to understand remainder theorem now. So if you would have... Uh, if you re recall in the previous previous session we discussed something of this sort that fx is a polynomial in x and it was being divided by a divisor a linear expression x minus c linear polynomial wherein we got a quotient gx and a constant remainder rx now i'm purposefully mentioning rx just to make you you know feel that all these expressions which we are dealing with are all polynomials in x okay so variable is x so whether it is a constant or it is a polynomial if it is a constant the degree of that constant is zero you know that but at the end of the day we can say that all of them are polynomials in x right so this is what the relation was which we were discussing the other day and uh, and now it's time to do a little bit of more analysis on this other things which we learned in the previous session was that degree of fx degree degree of fx i am writing like that degree of fx was equal to degree of degree of x minus c which was 1 is it which was 1 plus degree of degree of gx that is the quotient this is what we learned um in the last last session right degree of gx correct is what we learned and we also learned that degree of rx in this case it's a constant but generally speaking degree of rx um in this case rx is constant you know we saw that when you divided it with a linear polynomial the remainder is always constant we discussed this in the previous session but generally speaking, degree of Rx, the remainder expression or remainder polynomial will be less than degree of the divisor polynomial. Okay. So in this case, the divisor was X minus C. So hence, since the degree of X minus C is how much, guys, you know this, this is linear polynomial. So if this is one and less than one, the only possibility is zero. Negative numbers anyways are not allowed in polynomials. So degree of Rx will be zero and hence it is it was a constant term. Correct. This is what we learned. Now, what is remainder theorem, guys? What does remainder theorem mean? Now, remainder theorem is a mechanism to find out the remainders when a particular polynomial fx is divided by a linear polynomial x minus c. Again, I am writing it so that it becomes, you know, uh, solidly, you know, um, established in your mind. So you must remember this. That remainder theorem is a is a mechanism so let me write it as rt in short is a mechanism mechanism or way or method mechanism to find out find out remainders remainders when when uh or not remainders remainder right remainder remainder only one remainder will be found out in one division when a polynomial polynomial again please remember we are talking about polynomials only when a polynomial fx is divided divided by a linear a linear polynomial polynomial x minus c Okay, where c is constant, x is the variable, right? Is a mechanism to find out remainder when a polynomial fx is divided by a linear polynomial x minus c, or rather, we can generate it, uh, generalize it. Sorry, instead of writing ax minus c, 
let's write it as let's write it as any linear linear polynomial will be of the form of ax plus b right this is a linear polynomial so what is it? Uh, uh, remainder theorem remainder theorem is a mechanism to find out remainder when a polynomial fx is divided by a linear polynomial ax plus b without in brackets you can write without actual without actual division so you don't need to divide it okay you don't need to perform the division to find out the remainder you can do it just by using this theorem and let us see how so let us say uh, if if fx is divided by ax plus b the the quotient is let's say gx okay so we're saying let us say let us say that that when when uh when fx when fx when fx fx is divided by divided by fx is divided by ax plus b okay then quotient is gx and remainder is rx okay let us say you are dividing you are not actually performing the division but you just divide you are saying that if you divide it you will get these then can we not say that by whatever we discussed in the previous sessions and earlier as well that fx will be equal to ax plus b the divisor into the quotient plus the remainder isn't it can we say that yes we can say that right now now that means can i now say that fx is equal to a times x plus b by a so gx plus rx can i say that yes we can so if you see this thing is same as ax plus b so i've just taken a common purposefully why what what is the purpose will will you will cut, come to know a little while later okay now this is the what is this basically this is an equation in x everywhere there will be polynomials and expressions in x isn't it now what happens if x is equal to minus b upon a if let's say for one specific value of x which is minus b by a what will you see you will see fx so instead of x i can write minus b by a so f of minus b by a okay so you now know how to find out the value of a polynomial at any given value of the variable so we have dealt with in previous sessions you can go and check that out as well so now if x is minus b by a i'm interested in finding the value of the entire polynomial both lhs and rhs what will happen so lhs i wrote in the rhs you have to write a and instead of x you have to just deploy a minus b by a and there was a b by a already okay then this is g and minus b by a and plus i'm generally saying r whatever it is let's say r remainder right you can say minus b by a as well but then i am just saying whatever it is it is a remainder at the end of the day okay remainder so what do you see guys in this case if you see this is coming out to be zero minus b by a plus b by a is zero zero multiplied by all other factors will whatever is the value of g of minus b by a and a if you see this is becoming becoming zero so you will be left with minus b by a f of minus b by a is equal to r right so don't we get the remainder guys so we just got remainder 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 when when fx is divided divided by ax plus b right remainder when fx is divided by ax plus b is simply f of minus b by a right this is what is called remainder theorem now special case cases special case what is the special case special case is let's say a is equal to 1 and b is equal to minus c 
okay and then we'll get back to our initial right so in that case ax plus b will be ax plus b simply x minus c right so hence friends if you want to divide fx by x minus c let's say the quotient is gx and the remainder is r you can write x you can leave x as well because anyways that is going to be a constant right Con constant term so rx so hence what will happen so rx r will be simply f of minus b by a minus b was our what c and a is one so f of c so simply r is f of c correct is that okay so this is the this is what is called remainder theorem let's take an example and then you know you will be more comfortable so if you remember in the previous uh, session we had one division okay and this was the division so fx was in that case fx was x cube let's take an example i am taking an example now fx is x cube plus x square plus 2x plus 3 let's say this was the polynomial and you are dividing it by x plus 2 okay you are dividing it by x plus 2 so hence you wrote x cube plus x square plus 2x plus 3 if you remember in the previous session we did this if you if you remember this was x plus 2 and the quotient was x square minus x plus 4 and the remainder was minus 5 this is what we had got in the previous um, you know previous session this is what fx it was this was x plus 2 this is gx and this is r okay and this was the divisor linear divisor okay now let's say this was obtained by long division method now by long or the synthetic division method which we saw long division or basically by division method we actually divided divided it okay but then let's say we didn't divide then what will be uh, the remainder uh, according to the remainder theorem so x plus 2 if you if you see this what is the value of a here a is 1 and b is 2 isn't it so the remainder will be simply f of minus b by a is the remainder isn't it if you remember just check above we just saw that remainder is f of minus b by a what are b and a, a if you are dividing it by a x plus b then you know what is a and what is b a is coefficient of x b is the constant term so in this case x plus 2 so what is a 1 what is b 2 so hence r should be equal to f of minus b by a let's check so that means i have to find out the value of f at minus b by a so mine that means f of minus 2 b by a is minus 2 minus b by a minus 2 right so i have to basically find out f of minus 2 now what was fx fx was x cubed plus x squared plus 2x plus 3 isn't it that means we have to just simply find out f minus 2 and this will be the remainder right this is what it is saying remainder is f of minus 2 so let's find f of minus 2 so minus 2 to the power 3 plus minus 2 squared plus 2 times minus 2 plus 3 okay so this is minus 8 plus 4 minus 4 plus 3 and you you see we are getting minus 5 right which matches with our long division remainder isn't it so this is a beautiful theorem that without dividing you can find out the remainder on if uh, for any given division isn't it once again right so let's say if you are dividing it by if you're dividing fx by ax plus b okay then simply remainder is f of minus b by a right and for most of the cases it will be very simplified if you are dividing fx by x minus c let's say for this form then then the remainder is simply f of c because if you see minus b by a in this case if you try to compare it by compare it with ax plus b what is a guys a in this case is 1 and b minus c so minus b by a is simply c right 
So hence R is minus B by A or F of C. So both these forms you remember. This is a general form. And this is a specific form when the coefficient of x is 1 and x minus c is what you are using to divide fx. Okay. This is remainder theorem. We will see some problems on this to make it more clear. I hope this theorem is understood. This is a very vital theorem. You are going to utilize it multiple number of times till your algebra journey is on. Thanks for watching the video.